Welcome back to my YouTube channel everybody. My name is Carly and I'm so excited that you're here. Today I'm going to be working with one of my all-time favorite patterns by Anna Allen Clothing. It's called the Persephone Pant. I've made it a few times in jeans before. You may have seen them in my Harry's House video. But today I really want to try the short version of them. Instead of just leaving them blank, I want to add patchworky pockets over them I think maybe in the shape of stars and love hearts I think I just want them to be all wild and colorful so that's the plan also if it's your first time making jeans or pants this pattern is so good for beginners this was my first time adding a fly and zip and everything to a pair of pants and the instructions are so detailed let's get into the video <laughs> To get started, I cut out my PDF printed pattern. I went for a size two today. I previously made these pants in size fours with length and crotch and the regular crotch and I felt like both were slightly too big. So I decided to bite the bullet and go for the two. I cut it out of this really sweet corduroy furnishing fabric, which I felt like was a really nice weight and quality for shorts, highly recommend. And something that's really important to check is the grain of the fabric, making sure that the pattern pieces are facing the right ways. I forget this all the time in the process, but it's good to remind yourself, check the grain, check the grain. <laughs> I cut out my interfacing, got my zipper ready, and then got straight into the zipper construction. I can't really go too in depth about zipper construction because I'm still learning about it, but let me just say the zipper expansion pack from Anna Allen Clothing is legendary. I learned so much from it and it was my first zipper I've ever put in a pair of pants and I felt like it was so easy to read, it made sense, the pictures were helpful. I just highly recommend it. If you want to learn how to put a zipper in pants, I think this is your pattern. And I'm just, I'm not sponsored, I'm just saying it's so good guys. Also, it should be said that these pants actually come with button closures instead of a zipper, but you can purchase the zipper expansion pack and that gives you all of the instructions for a zipper instead of those buttons. So that's what I opted for for this. along with the zipper expansion pack I'm up to step 17 and this is the part where when I first made these pants I really stumbled it was my first time making a zipper and it tells you to attach the right side of the zipper to the left fly facing like so and my instinct was just to do it like this so that you could still see this like the zipper and I was like mm, that's not very pant like but then after inspecting pants I already had, I realized that fly facing has to go on top of the fly. So the left side overlaps the right side and that's what makes it look really profesh. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't know how to do that the first time. So I just thought I would say that. You can totally do this guys. You're doing so well. I just recommend taking every step slowly, calmly. You got this. I'm sending you good zipper vibes. Okay, I have to do some basting stitching now, just so that I top stitch really neatly from the front. And for once in my life, I'm not gonna eyeball it, so I'm gonna stitch it. And I thought while I stitch, let's do question time. This week's question comes from a subscriber called Bandana Rathor. Hi, thank you for your question. The question was, what kind of fabrics work well together when you're patchworking? And especially for a dress, like can you mix different styles and weights of fabrics? And this is a great question and I've definitely done my own playing and experimenting with this exact thing. I don't recommend mixing and matching fabrics that have very different feels vibes or weights. So for example, a linen and a really heavy denim for a dress would kind of be a bit hard to work with and it would obstruct the flow and the feel of the garment, but potentially a cotton poplin and a linen and maybe even a, a poly cotton if you thrifted something like that, I think they would all work very harmoniously. Sometimes I even mix like a satin or I'll throw in an organza if I'm doing like a really crazy fun piece. As long as all of the fabrics have a similar weight 
and feel to them, it should work. Overall with patchworking, I think it's just good to try and keep things harmonious. And one of the ways to do that is just keeping all your fabrics in a similar fabric style. And that way you can go crazy with the patterns of the fabric. Another example of using a few different styles of fabric in my work was a few weeks ago I did the patchwork coat. And for that one I worked with corduroy, like a corduroy furnishing, a heavy canvas and some more furnishing materials and they were all different but they all had like a heavy coaty feel <laughs> i don't know their exact weight but you can usually feel it out and your instincts will tell you if something's not working anyway i hope that answered your question thank you so much for asking and as always if you have any questions for me leave them in the comments and i will answer them in the videos to come but yeah let's get straight back into the video zipper installation is done these pants will come together quick now because i've been filming i've just made a few really random little errors but they're looking good and i'm really excited to start with the patchworking i think that's one of the next steps but i'm gonna break for lunch and then we're gonna get back into it your girl loves a funky idea and so i just had to do this thing that was swimming around in my mind which was just cutting out a bunch of random shapes and sewing them to the shorts don't judge me it was just an idea so I cut out a star in my main fabric choice and then the same star shape in a lining so that I would sew those two pieces right sides together all the way around the shape except leaving a tiny gap so that I could turn it right sides out. Then I clipped the seam allowance so everything would lay as flat as possible and proceeded to flip it right sides out. And it was kind of cute. <laughs> Right, I just trialed this to make sure that it worked and I think it's cute. I'm gonna cut out a bunch of shapes and then cut out that exact same shape in a lining. Sew them right sides together, leaving a small gap, flip them right sides out so there's no raw edges. And then I'm gonna top stitch them onto my shorts all over the place so I've got all of these like cool shapes, colors. And I'm gonna make some of them pockets just by stitching all of the bottom down and then just leaving like a top part open, I think. That's the process. Please enjoy this compilation of me sewing random shapes onto my shorts. It was a little bit of a tedious process, but I kind of just had to get the idea out of my brain and it did spark a lot of joy that some of the shapes were in fact very weirdly shaped pockets. And when I put my hand in the star pocket, my hand was like a little starfish. I think that's very fun and hilarious. Anyway, I just proceeded to repeat that process with a heart, a smiley face, whatever. I was cutting out two fabrics for each shape, sewing right sides together, clipping seams, turning them right sides out, giving them a very good press. The process was simple and easy. A little timey, but easy. Also, I did get a little bit extra and I started hand sewing details on like this smiley face onto one of the patches. I thought it was kind of adorable and I would do more of this detail in the future if I had time. I'm having a pretty hard time deciding when to finish, but I think I'm happy with this vibe. I've done five different shapes and because these don't have a side seam, they'll wrap around like this. The star is a pocket and the heart is a pocket. And so hopefully that's cute. After sewing all of my shapes down, I got straight back into construction and that led me to doing darts. I marked them with a ruler onto my fabric with a chalk so that it would be really easy to rub out once I was finished sewing and I sewed the darts in. I then sewed and overlocked the inner leg seam together so that it would start to form shorts and then I pressed that seam to the back and top stitched it. I'm doing a really skinny double top stitch. I'll see if the camera can focus on it. I think it looks so cute. It's a bit wonky but oh, they're coming together guys. Sad news everybody. I tried them on, they fit perfectly around my waist, but I should have lengthened the crotch a little bit. It's just like the tiny little wedgie, which is really, really, really sad, but it's okay. I should have made a draft. I'm gonna finish them, they're still really cool. And it's only just like 
I would want this much extra, you know what I mean? You live and you learn. I'm gonna um, add the waistband and hem them now though, and then they'll be done. But before doing that, what I actually did was top stitch my inner leg seam down in parallel lines. Also, this pattern taught me this incredible technique, which I had never seen before, and it helps to get the stitching on the inner leg. You just want to make your pants, like, wear the sewing machine. No, the sewing machine is wearing the pants. Okay, and you're just, like, centering it right at the crotch. And now you're ready to sew, and you're not going to, like, sew over any leg because it's kind of, like, over that part of the machine. It's important to note that I opted against doing the little pockets at the front. I think... I feel like they're called welt pockets, but I might have that wrong. I didn't want to do them this time, and I don't think I'm going to add belt loops either. Just keeping it really simple. I used to be an unhinged hammer, guys. I would not press, I would not pin, I would just hope for the best and really finish my projects with quite some interesting hems. But these days I do press both times over and pin it, especially if it's something like jeans, pants, anything that requires precision. I highly recommend taking that time. And then I got onto attaching the waistband. I just followed all of the steps very carefully and tried my best to evenly stitch this waistband down, which was frightening to me, but it was fine. It was fine. I'm at the end of these shorts. I don't know why, but my machine really struggles with buttonholes. So I am hand stitching my buttonhole. I will link the tutorial that showed me how to do this. It's so easy. It's definitely not as polished as a regular machine buttonhole, but it does the job. And for your own wearing, that's totally fine. I'm gonna finish stitching my buttonhole. Gonna put my button on. I think you guys can jump ahead in time and have a look at the finished product. Yeah, enjoy. project and the video. I think I love what I made conceptually. I love all of these little appliques and just the vibe of all of these different colors, but I do want to definitely perfect the fit of these pants. I have made them in a size 4 before with a lengthened crotch, and then I made them again in a size 4 with a shortened crotch, and those felt slightly too big, and these ones in a size 2 feel slightly too small. And I think I just want to try and grade in between those two sizes. I still love what I've made, but the fit will definitely just take them to another level. So I'll definitely give this a crack again. And hopefully my fourth time I will get them lucky. Anyway, that's the joy of sewing, getting to have a go and learn along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you make anything like it, please let me know. I would love to see. And as always, be sure to let me know what you're working on this week in the comments. I love hearing what you're all sewing away on. I wish you all the best in your week to come and I will see you in the next video. Bye.